Apple always does this, man. They kill their own children. They spend years getting us to use one of their technologies and then boom, they kill it off. They replace it with something newer. The original iPhone connector, Firewire, the SCSI port, the SuperDrive, the original Final Cut Pro, the original iMovie. Well, don't look now, but Apple's about to kill off two more of its offspring, iPhoto and Aperture. In their place, a completely new unified program for the Mac called Photos. In every way possible, it's identical to the Photos app on the iPhone and the iPad. You've got your three automatic groups, moments, collections, and years. You've got your thumbnails that you can drag through to find something. You got your editing tools right here with a choice of either super simple, just drag a slider, or tweaky and deep, expand and adjust the sliders independently, or even type numbers in. You've got your share button to post your photos to Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, or any other service that develops plugins for this editable menu. And you've got all the printed stuff you can order, books, calendars, greeting cards, prints. Above all, for the first time, you've got real automatic wireless simultaneously syncing of your entire photo library across all your Apple stuff, iPhones, iPads, and your Macs. So watch this. We'll open up uh, Mr. Buffalo here. We'll edit it. Let's say I decide this one would look good as black and white. So I'm going to say black and white. I say done. And in a matter of seconds, the same change happens on the phone. Or let's say I want to delete Mr. Bear on my phone here. I delete it here, and then within seconds, watch what happens back home on my Mac. Gone. This automatic syncing feature is called iCloud Photo Library, and it requires that you have enough iCloud storage to fit all your pictures. You get five gigabytes for free, but you'll almost certainly have to buy more storage. It's 12 bucks a year for 20 gigs, for example. Over the years, iPhoto has gotten a little clunky. It's been a little burdened down with tacked on features. Photos, on the other hand, is clean, beautiful, slick, fast, and very easy to use. And I gotta tell you, that thing about having all the exact same photos organized the exact same way and edited in the same ways on all your devices in real time, that's super sweet. But, and this is a big but, this is a 1.0 program. In fact, it's not even 1.0. This is a sneak preview of a developer build, and then there's gonna be a public beta in a few weeks, and then later in the spring, the real program will come out. But the point is, right now, it's really bare bones. It's missing a lot of features that even iPhoto and Aperture used to have. The ones I'll miss most are star ratings and flags. So yes, by all means, be infuriated that Apple has once again killed off a couple of its own children. However, this time around, Apple has taken extreme pains to make the transition easy for you. For example, you could perfectly well run Photos and Aperture or iPhoto side by side on the same Mac. Read my column on Yahoo Tech for the nitty gritty details on how you do that. But the bottom line is this, Apple won't be upgrading iPhotos and Aperture anymore, but those programs will still be available and usable for years to come. Meanwhile, Apple will keep beefing up photos with new features. You don't have to make the switch until you decide that Photos for the Mac is good and ready. iPhoto for the Mac, dead at age 13. Of course, at that rate, the new Mac program, Photos, should be alive and well until 2028.